It seems like we're always searching for something that's lost. We lose all sorts of things, keys and uh, documents and uh, all sorts of things that we misplace. We knew right where they were at, but now we can no longer find them. And we want to try to find the things that are lost. That's why we went to Jamaica. We wanted to seek and save that which was lost. And I just want to take this opportunity to publicly thank everyone for their prayers, uh, for our efforts down there. <clears throat> and I look forward to, in the next few weeks, uh, sharing with you the report from our trip. But we're looking for things that are lost. Looking for my voice. It's, it's in Jamaica somewhere. If you go down to Montego Bay and you find it, you bring it back. Uh, I could probably use it. Well, that's why we go to places like Jamaica. That's why the teens go to Bowling Green. That's why we'll go to Baton Rouge later on. That's why we door knock here in Arnold to find the lost. And we need to have a good and faithful attitude toward those folks who are lost. And we find the lost everywhere. Because there are two kinds of people in the world. There are saved and there are lost. And the saved folks are in the church and they're righteous. And they're walking the pathways of righteousness and we know right where they're at. <coughs> but when we talk about the lost, there are several different kinds of lost. There are the kinds of lost that have never been found. There are those who have been found but now are lost again for whatever reason. And we need to develop a good and faithful attitude toward them. Those folks who were inside of Christ but now find themselves outside of the body. Let's talk about these different kinds as we talk about alien sinners. These are folks that have never been saved and we want to start in Matthew chapter 13. The parable of the sower I think is applicable applicable to what we're talking about today. Matthew 13 and verse 4, we know that the sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some folks have never had the opportunity for the gospel to really penetrate. They've never been obedient until the gospel. We get to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. We see that in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and they that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, those folks who have not obeyed the gospel, we know they're lost. Because in verse 9 says, those will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. There are folks in the world that are lost because they've never been found. Because they've never obeyed the gospel. How do we need to treat those individuals that are outside of Christ and always have been with kindness and godliness. Many people in the world look down upon Christianity because, well, there's a bunch of reasons. But a lot of it boils down to our attitude. How do we present ourselves as better than everybody else and coming from a position of, of holiness and judgmental righteousness to reach down to, to extend the gospel to someone? That generally turns people away. We need to treat folks with kindness, with godliness. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. We are the light of the world. Just like Bird is. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Between a cough drop and a water, I might make it. Matthew 5, 14. We are the light of the world. A city that is set upon a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and place it under a bushel, but upon a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. We're never time to shine our light directly into the light. <coughs> directly into the eyes of folks. But we let it shine. And people see Christ in us. We magnify him through our actions, through our godliness and living. <coughs> Galatians 6, 7 through 10. Paul says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall reap from the flesh corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall reap life everlasting. 
And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially them of the household of faith. Let us be faithful in the harvest, patient and diligent, and let us go out and share the gospel with those folks that are outside of Christ. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. All power is given unto me, Jesus says. Go and teach all nations, baptizing them. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel unto every creature. In Acts 8, in verse 4, that's exactly what they did. Those that were scattered abroad went everywhere, preaching the word of God. Because those alien sinners, those folks that were lost and never had been found, needed it so desperately. There are still people who need the word of God desperately today. And we have to take it to them. And we have to do so with an attitude of kindness and with an attitude of godliness. Remember this, what we're doing today is talking about our attitude toward the lost. Our attitude is something that is a mindset that is reflected in our behavior. How we think about these people is demonstrated in how we act toward them. We need to change the way we think so that we change the way we act. And we need to see the world as it is and not as we would have it to be. I think it's really interesting. We were in Montego Bay this past week. And when you're out in Montego Bay, you see the, the poverty that exists there. And on the resort that we, that we stay at, it's, it's a really nice place. They've got, you know, food, and there's the beach, and there's, our, there's it's just a wonderful place. And Brother Medley, the preacher at Montego, but he came and had dinner with us Friday night and stuck around Friday night and did our Devo with us and our Devo Saturday morning uh, before we left yesterday. And we were, me and him were just walking around Friday night. And I said, Medley, what, what, what do you see when you look around? And I was, I was looking for a cultural answer. You know, you come from, you know, an area where, it's poor. And you, you work with, you know, in an area that's poor. And then we bring you on here to eat supper with us, and it's kind of what is essentially a very opulent, very opulent and plush environment. So I just kind of wondered what he thought. You know, does he get aggravated when he see all this and knows how everybody else in Montego Bay lives? And you know what he said? I go, man, what do you see when you look around? He said, Brother Josh, I see souls. I see souls that need to be saved. I just looked at him. I said, Manly, I think you could teach me something about being a Christian. His attitude was a lot better than mine. I was looking at this from a, a cultural thing. I wanted to know what he thought. You know, I'm curious about things. He looked at it from a spiritual perspective. He said, I see souls. He said, what if we converted everybody here and they went back all over the world? There were folks from Canada, there were folks from England, there were folks from uh, the Middle East and Africa and everywhere at this one resort. He said, what if we could convert everybody? And then they all went home and converted other folks. His question was a lot better than mine because he had a different attitude or maybe a better attitude than I did. We all want to see things. Let's see things through the eyes of the gospel when it comes to alien sinners, but also... The ignorant and the young, and I don't mean ignorant in any sort of derogatory way or demeaning way, but folks who just don't quite know yet. If I wanted to be demeaning, it'd say ignorant. That's the way we say it in Tennessee. So it's ignorant. It's people who do not quite yet know. Still too young children are ignorant. They don't quite know yet. There are folks who are baptized into Christ and they're departing the faith because of lack of knowledge and depth. Matthew 13 and verse 5. The soil went forth to sow, right? And the birds ate up some, but some fell in stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. These folks were baptized in the Gospels, but they didn't have roots. Romans 10 verses 1 through 4. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is this, that they might be saved. I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. 
Some folks are baptized into Christ. And before they can, while they're still young, while they still don't quite know all the rules yet, while they're still learning, they fall away because they don't have depth. We need to treat these folks with some compassion and some understanding. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, begin with me in verse number 1. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes our brother unto the church of God which is at Corinth. To them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that are in every place, call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks, my God, always on your behalf for the grace of God given unto you, that in everything you may be enriched, enriched by him, in all utterances and all knowledge, Folks need to be enriched. They need to come to have that all knowledge. And we need to understand what Paul says to fathers in Ephesians 6 and verse 4. Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Now we know that Paul called Timothy his son in the faith. We need to find some Timothys. Those folks that don't quite know yet and are young Christians. And we need to take them under our wing. We have to have patience and compassion and understanding with small children. Because we've been there, we know that they don't know. And we try to bring them up so that they will. So we see a brother or sister begin to veer off the path because they're young and they're weak. We need to encourage them to grow so they get back on the pathways of righteousness. 2 Peter chapter 1. Beside this, giving all diligence. Add to your faith. Supplement your faith. We talked about the spiritual vitamins that are these Christian graces. Knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. For if these things be in you and abound, we need to get folks to learn how to make these things abound in their lives. That they may neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord. Now let's jump down if you're in chapter 1 to chapter 3, verse 17. Peter says, Ye therefore, beloved, (coughs) seeing these things before, beware, lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to grow in grace and in knowledge. And we see folks veering off the way. It may be because they don't quite know it's off the way yet. You treat toddlers different than teenagers. And when brothers or sisters begin to veer off and depart from the faith just because they don't like the depth, we need to help cultivate them so they can grow and encourage them. Will they still be lost if we don't? Yes, we need to know that. But they're lost for a different reason. They came at it from a different angle and we need to approach it a little bit differently. We need to take the young differently than we take the immature, the folks who are spiritual teenagers, let's say. Those folks, they know the rules, but it's they're not quite mature enough in their faith. These folks are like the people we read about in Matthew 13 and verse 7. They depart the faith through some negligence. A sower went forth to sow, some fell by the wayside. Some fell in the stony places, and some fell among thorns. And the thorns broke up, uh, sprung up, and choked them. We know that we need to keep our spiritual gardens clean, but sometimes we get a little negligent. My children know their rooms need to be clean, but I wouldn't ask anybody to walk in them right now. They know they need to do these things. They know they need to feed the dog, and sometimes the dog just sits there and he looks at the bowl, and he looks at the kids. They know he need to eat, and they're watching TV, and the dog's just pawing at the door. dog needs to go out. Ridge, Katie, one second. We stray off just a little time sometimes because we know, but we we don't really heed yet. Matthew 15. The people draw nigh to me with their mouths and honor me with their lips. But sometimes their heart, our hearts are not in it. Their heart is far from me. 
In vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. When it comes to the spiritually immature, we need to treat them with love but firmness. I sound like a spiritual teenager tonight, or today. We treat the young and the ignorant, the folks who don't quite yet know, with some, some love and some, some tenderness and some encouragement. As we get older, we need more firmness. 1 Corinthians 5, 6 and 7, Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be new, pure. For even Christ, our Passover, uh, is sacrificed for us. And we know the Passover contained no leaven. Galatians 2, verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, Paul said, I withstood him to the face. Peter knew that he had messed up. He knew that he probably shouldn't have behaved in the way that he did, but he did anyway. And Paul said, I withstood him to the face. Sometimes you have to stand up with some firmness. Not orneriness and firmness, not over and high-handedness and firmness, but with love and firmness. And we need to provoke those folks to love and good works. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves is... We need to think about each other. We need to consider each other and exhort one another. And so much more as we see that day approaching. Because we see in Hebrews 11, 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that's not seen. We go and we see how the fathers had that. Well, because without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When we see brothers and sisters falling away, departing the faith through negligence, they're just not keeping their spiritual gardens clean enough. They know what they need to do, but for whatever reason, their heart's just not in it. We need to help stir them up. Cause them, as Christ said in Revelation 2, remember their first love. Sometimes I have to remind my children what they need to do. To get them back on the proper process for behavior. Brethren, we got to do that sometimes with each other when we know when we're in the... I know the pathway of right is right here, but I'm just... I'm going to drag my toe on the other side. Here's the line. And sometimes as teenagers, we want to get as close to it as we can. Saw a picture on the internet the other day of this child. Mom said not to go outside. His feet were inside the door, but his whole body was laying outside. Well, I'm still, I'm inside, right? Did that child know better? Of course he did. Of course he did. But we try to just get right as close as we can, and I know I need to be in the pathways of light, but I'm just, I'm going to run my hand down the side. Like Ridge, he puts his hand on the walls as he walks down the hall. That's why I repaint three feet down every year just about. Sometimes we want to walk, but we just want to trail our hand, you know. Well, brethren, we can't do that. We're either light or we're dark. We're righteous or we're unrighteous. We're either sin or we're not. And we see people behaving immaturely. We need to love them, but we need to treat them with firmness and just encourage them, provoke them to love and good works to get back to where they need to be. And sometimes folks depart just because they're faint and they're weak. Be not weary in well-doing. Sometimes we just get worn down. Matthew 13, or 1 Thessalonians 5, 14. We exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak. Be patient toward all men, seeing that none render evil for evil unto any man. But ever follow that which is good, both amongst yourselves and to all men. Sometimes life just gets too much. We need to remember to treat those folks with patience and under. We know what it's like to have problems, to be in difficulties. Walk in the light as he is in the light. That is our command. We have to keep walking. 
But sometimes we'll run across folks who have just sat down. How do you treat the fiend and the weak, those who are no longer really faithful? They're not unfaithful. They've not just blatantly went out in the world, but they've just stopped living for God. They just run down. Life and the world has just got too much for them to bear. Galatians 6, 1 through 5. Please turn there with me. Brethren, Paul says, if a man be overtaken in a fault, sometimes we are overtaken. It's just overcome and we can't, we feel like we can't bear that. He says, ye that are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. If a man thinketh himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But every land, let every man prove his own work, and then shall he rejoice in himself alone, not another. For every man must bear his own burdens. No way. He says in verse 2 to bear each other's burdens, and he says in verse 5 that we can only bear our own burdens. I can only bear and be responsible for my own sins and shortcomings. I alone can, can handle that. You can't take that from me. But you can come and give me your shoulder to lean on while I carry him. And I can do that for you. I don't, and I can't answer for your sins, and I can't, I can't have your weight, but I can help you to bear it. Just like you can help me to bear mine. Second Peter chapter 3. Peter says, the second epistle, beloved, I write now unto you, in both which I may stir up your minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which are spoken by the holy prophets, the commandments of the apostles. Stir up your mind to remembrance. We need to remember to be looking out for our brethren. We're walking in the pathways of righteousness, and some folks, have, they've sat down. We've got to walk. Maybe it's just a step a day, but we have to walk forward. And then folks begin to settle. And life begins to be too much. We need to comfort, support, and provide assistance for them. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 3. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Christ that in everything you be enriched by all in your utterance and in all knowledge. Coming behind in no gift, enriching is what we need. We need to reach out and give support. And we go back to 1 Thessalonians 5, 14, right? Warn them that are unruly, unruly. comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, and be patient. When we come upon a brother or sister who's sat down in the way, we give them our hand. Careful lest they pull us down as well, and we know that. And we heed those warnings. Lest we also be tempted to, oh, it's be so nice to sit down and take a load off, but we can't. We have to keep walking, and we need to reach down with those folks who have stopped walking for God. Maybe they haven't just completely forsaken everything, but they've just quit walking for God. They're faint and they're weak. Let's give them a hand. But in the final point this morning, there are those warn the unruly. Those folks who know what they need to do and they're not trying to tiptoe and they're falling away because they're real close to the line. They just said, I don't care. I know what God wants me to do and I like the world better. Departing from the faith through deliberate action. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2. They speak great swelling words of vanity. They allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that are clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption. For of whom is man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if they afterward have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein. And overcome the latter end is worse than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness then after they had known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them, they knew it. They had and were living and walking in the path of righteousness. And they turned from the commandments of God. They knew what they needed to do. 
and they simply, for whatever reason, deliberately departed from the faith. We need to understand this morning that Christians can lose their eternal salvation. Can't take it away from them. Some drop it through negligence. Some never had a good grip on it to start with. And some folks simply cast it aside. We need to treat the brother and sister in Christ who does this. We need to treat them with love but with discipline the same way you discipline a child. Why do you do that? Because you love them. Is it harsh? Yes. Does it work? Of course. Matthew 18, 15 through 17, If thy brother shall trespass against thee, go. Go to him and tell him his fault. Between thee and him alone, if he shall learn, learn thou hast gained thy brother. If he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. Then in the mouths of two or three witnesses, though every word may be established, and if he shall neglect to hear them, bring it to the church. If he neglect to hear the church, let him be as a heathen as a publican. Cast out, disciplined, James, talking to Christians, about Christians, said, Brethren, if any one of you, if any one of you Christians do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know what he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. Sometimes folks leave the church because they really want to leave the church. We still need to love them. Sometimes we have to discipline them. Let's that leaven, leaven at the whole lump, but we do it with a spirit of love and gentleness for the sole purpose of repentance. We warn and admonish unto repentance. 1 Thessalonians 3, 13 through 15. We need to understand that those folks need to be saved. We need to warn the unruly. 1 Corinthians 5, 4 through 5, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, which are together together and in my spirit with the power of our Lord Christ to deliver such a one unto Satan. Why? For the, the flood, destruction of the flesh, that the spirit might be saved. We need to find the lost even when they used to be found. Even when they were found, knew they were found, and still wanted to be lost again. But so we can save a soul from destruction. We need to have a good and positive, faithful attitude when it comes to saving the lost. We need to understand that we can convert the sinner from their error, their error of their ways. You can't go to heaven carrying sin with you. We have to get it all taken care of and washed away in the blood of the Lamb through baptism. We need to love the sinner unto their conversion. She's like Brother Medley. He said, I, I see souls, Brother Josh. Souls that need to be saved. We need to always look to heaven and the glory and the honor and the salvation that that offers. I need to love the lost enough to go into them. To my friends and neighbors who have never obeyed the gospel and invite them to church. Invite them to do a Bible study. And keep after them lovingly and kindly, patiently. But I need to do the same with my brothers and sisters in Christ who wander away for whatever reason. We have to do that. Encouraging every Christian every day and helping others walk in the light. That's the goal of us. Those who are faithful is to bring others unto Christ and encourage each other to remain faithfully in God. The lost are what we're trying to save. And if you're lost, I want you to come to Christ this morning. If you've never obeyed the gospel, come. Hear his word, believe in him, repent of your sins, confess his name, be baptized in the water for the forgiveness of sins. Become a faithful, active, obedient child of God today. And grow, starting today, in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord. Who maybe you're a new Christian and you, you know that you stumble sometimes and fall. And you're not faithful like you need to be. It's so hard to be a young Christian. Not just young in age, but young in spiritual maturity. Maybe you know you stumble and fall and you're not where you need to be. And you need forgiveness. And you need prayers for strength. Maybe you're spiritually mature and you know what you need to do. And sometimes you know you get too close to that line you step over it some. 
and you need forgiveness and you need prayers for strength, then we pray that you would do and come forward this morning. Maybe you've left the church for whatever reason and you desire to be restored and make your life right. Or you know what, brethren? Sometimes it's more often the case that we just get weak. That we're trying to walk on heaven's road and it gets so heavy and we just want to sit down. If you need a hand up this morning, if you need some strength and encouragement and prayers of the church so that you can keep walking faithfully day after day, then come forward and let us know. We, we can't pray for you and help you if we don't know you're in trouble. We want to help you today. We want everybody to go to heaven and obey the invitation as we stand and as we sing.